FlossTube, Stephanie here, Ms. Oso Crafty. Welcome to my FlossTube video number 59. <laughs> Hello if you're new or welcome back if you've been here before. So it's been a while since I filmed. The last time I filmed was October 2nd. Today is November 1st, so it's been about a month. <laughs> October was very busy and November is shaping up to be the same thing. So I figured I'd film today, even though I don't have a whole lot of time, but I would rather get it done quickly than not get it done at all. So <laughs> let's get into it. I have several finishes to share, lots of whips. So I started out October working on Water Goddess, and I did finish her. So I'll insert a clip I made with a close up. Hey peeps, so here is my finish The Water Goddess by Joan Elliott. I thought you might appreciate some close ups because there's so much detail on her. So she is stitched on 32 count Whirlpool Belfast. If I picture this plus, she took like 35 days to stitch over the course of a couple years. And she is my last of the elemental goddesses. Um, let's see, well, there are Three shades of metallic on her. There are there's the, the white, which I actually use PTB for, and that's the moon. And then there's a, a light blue, you can see at the edge of the moon. You can also see it down here, that's a crinic. And then the, the gold, that's a crinic as well. There's two colors of beads. There's the blue, there's the gold. I mean, they're not gold, they're they're white, sorry. Yeah, those are white beads and gold beads. Uh, sorry, white beads and blue beads. And the skirt is huge. <laughs> it took forever to stitch. I think most of the time I spent stitching this was just the skirt. The stitching in the back stitching, of course. I do love how it turned out, though. I think it's really beautiful, the way she's resting on the lily pads. And the layers of her dress are so pretty. These are all my favorite colors. <laughs> I love the little dragonflies. They're really cute. They have Crinic for the bodies and a little bead for their head. Those are really cute. There's two over here and then there's one over here and here and here. The moon is really cool. It has the water signs um, of the zodiac backstitched on there. There's, oh gosh, I don't know, Pisces and Capricorn maybe? I'm not sure, sorry. <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway, so she's wearing this lovely, like, strapless gown. She's got, like, um, little dangling gold work from her bodice and a beaded belt. And she has a little tattoo on her bicep in Krynik there. She's got a really pretty necklace, a bracelet. Lots of beading around her hands. She's got a bead on her forehead. <laughs> She's wearing flowers in her hair. Purple eyeshadow. Lovely deep raspberry lipstick. She's got her eyes closed. Relaxing, meditating, whatever. I think it is so cool. I love the water droplets in Krynik that are just drifting up from her fingers. Those hands were so difficult to stitch. My copy of this chart is in a magazine. It was a color chart and the tiny fractional stitches. It was like an equal sign and a squiggle sign in like virtually the same color. So man, it was hard to see, but I muddled through. I love how her hair turned out. It's like three shades of dark brown and I love how uh, long and free it is. So that is Water Goddess. Very pleased with her. And I'm glad to be done with the Elemental series. <laughs> All right, see you back in the main video. All right, welcome back. So after Water Goddess, I worked on Trick or Treat Fairy for one day. I took her to my stitchy meetup at the Fairfax County Library and I managed to finish her. She was just missing a few beads. I'll insert a clip for that here. Hello, hello. Here's my finish of the Trick or Treat Fairy by Nora Corbett. I thought you might like a few close-ups because she's so sparkly and beaded and all that. So <laughs> she is stitched on 32 count opalescent Belfast and Midas Touch by Silk Weaver. Really pretty fabric, a bit milder than what I normally go for, but I thought it would work well for this piece and I'm very happy with how it turned out. 
It looks a bit desaturated here in the camera. It is more of a warmer tone in real life. Um, she took nine days to stitch, did I mention that? And over a couple years. <laughs> so I got the pattern from an old magazine, Cross Stitch and Needlework, um, many years old, but it is also available as a PDF download from Hershner's. Now close up, my favorite part of the pattern is probably these spider webs here and this electric blue cry neck. I love how that turned out. I think it is so pretty. The pumpkins are a nice touch too. They have some green cry neck on them for their stems and vines. And her boots are really cute with the beads and everything. The letters trick or treat are spelled out. Love the beadwork extending from her hands. I think that's really pretty. The owl. Cute, oh my gosh, I love him, her familiar. <laughs> She's got a beaded headdress. The edge of her gown is beaded. She's got a little brooch or something on her. She's wearing gloves. Looking at the moon, astral trail in the sky. There are like five shades of chronic in this and maybe five different colors of beads. <laughs> A lot of bling in a very small package. I mean, it's not super small. It's like nine by 13 or something, but you know, it's not huge either. <laughs> so there she is and very pleased with her. I will definitely try to get her frame for next Halloween. All right, see you back in the main video. Okay, welcome back. So also at the library, I worked on my mini mandala piece. This is by Broder's Brisson. And I'm gonna flip it to the door, there we go. <laughs> okay, so here it is. This is the October mandala here. I really like it. It kind of reminds me of witches. I think these could be like little witch hats and something about the um, motifs in the center makes me think of the occult. Anyway, I think it's really cool. So in addition to doing that, I also worked on the border. So I tried. First I went to the Stay the Stitches site and I found a free border pattern by Elizabeth Almond. I tried that, I didn't like it. It was just too small in my fabric, doing it one over one. This is 22 count card longer. And then I decided to try this pattern. This is an old DMC pattern called Black Work Oriental. And I got the idea from an Instagram account. It's called uh, Main Ideas. Sorry, I don't know the name of the stitcher, but she was she put this on her uh, piece and I decided to try it for mine as well. First I tried it one over one. It was too crowded. The medallions in the center were just indistinct. So for all that, that was the second frogging. Then I decided to try this over two. I didn't really have a whole lot of excess fabric to work with, so I sewed on some extra. That's what this seam line here is. I'll probably rip out the seam when I'm done. I'm thinking about maybe like carefully fringing the edges of this and like uh, putting it on a mat with spray adhesive or something and framing it. We shall see. I'm doing the border in the same colors that I worked the medallions as I go around. So the border up here matches the top row and then this will match that row and this will match that row and then the one down here and around the bottom will be black. This is definitely coming along. Uh, the new pattern was just published today. I think I'm gonna put it here. So that would be nice. I do intend to work on this piece well pretty soon within the next week or so. I gave that a couple days, maybe like two days, to get the medallion done and that part of the border, which does constitute one third of the border. All right, so after that, I moved on to my Mill Hill Village, which I forgot. Let me grab it, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back with my Mill Hill Village. Here it is too big even for my board. 
There's the other border. Oh, back, back, back. There we go. There it is. Eight buildings. The one that I worked on this month was this one here, the bakery. It took one day and I finished the beading. So let's give you a little close up. Love how it turned out. I think it's really cute. I love this lantern here. Oh my gosh. And the cakes in the window. Adorable. The sign, Village Bakery. I love the little entranceway with the wrought iron railing there and the, the lantern hanging from the awning. Oh my gosh. I love it. I think that turned out so cute. So the eight buildings are done with the exception of a couple beads on the needle workshop up here. But that was my goal for this year. So this is stitched on 28 count um, stormy gray jobelin hand dyed by Mitchell. And the next building will be the Queen Anne house down here. So I did extend the border a little bit on each side. And if I get close, you can probably see I did some gridding across to prep for the next couple buildings. I will be starting them all in January so I can count them for my year of whips. Or I don't know, I might actually start the Queen Anne house in December if I have time after finishing the um, Charm Centerpiece. All right, on the 12th, let's see, I did not stitch at all. I don't know why. I just have an X in my bullet journal. <laughs> Usually if I've been knitting or diamond painting or something like that, I'll note it. But maybe I just had an off day or something. Okay, so on the 13th, Oh, I know why. Wait, is that right? The 12th was a Friday. No, I don't know why. Never mind. Okay, so <laughs> on the Saturday, I worked on my fall fairy piece, which is sorry. Okay, so I worked on fall fairy. I actually worked on her a whole lot in October. I gave her eight days in all, which was my longest rotation. Get a little clip. So this is, whoops, well, my clip went flying. Okay, never mind. <laughs> this is the Dimensions Gold Kit. It is not actually finished, but it's getting there. The regular cross stitch is finished, and I did all the back stitching. Well, not all of it, but most of it on this page. I did everything with the exception of the metallic gold. It calls for three strands of the gold. It's like a kind of like a blending filament that the thing was kitted with, and I don't know if I'm going to do that. I might just, I'll try it, but if it's too onerous, I'll substitute number four braid or something. So the this page has several different colors of back stitching. There's dark brown, there's like a light orangey brown, there's dark green, light green. It took two days to back stitch. So a lot some of it you can't even see because it's like dark on dark and that was frustrating, but I think it looks really good now. I'm happy with it. It'll look even better once the metallic is in. Next up, I will work on finishing this page with the back stitch, and then I'll do this page and this page. This page, there's already some done already. The leaves up here and over here, uh, no, over here, and some of the tree trunk going down. That's all back stitched, and her sleeve is back stitched. So there's really not, well, I see there's not too much left to do on the, that first page. Maybe like another day's worth of back stitching. <laughs> this one, oh gosh, it's just, it's a, taking forever. It's my oldest whip and I'm determined to finish it this month. So, I mean, as you can see, it's pretty close. So it took two days to back stitch this 
page here, and there's four pages, so realistically, I might be like a week away from finishing it. And of course, besides the back stitch, there's also some beads to add, but that won't take long. So I'm very happy with how she is coming out. But next time I do a Dimensions Gold, I am swapping out the fabric for sure. Okay, so I worked on the Fall Fairy that whole week, and then it was time for my retreat, which was Stitch Fest in Northern Virginia, in Herndon, by Washington Douglas International Airport. It was fantastic. I'm actually wearing my Stitch Fest t-shirt now. Let me move the camera so you can see. Stitch Fest, Herndon, Virginia, 2018. The, um, it's a glitter print in gold. I don't know why it looks so desaturated here. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so I designed that like little graphic and had it made into a t-shirt and then I also turned it into a cross stitch pattern which was like retreat swag for everybody, a free pattern. And it's actually been stitched up by Amanda, Lazy Stitcher VT on Insta. Hi Amanda, if you're watching, it looks really great how uh, she stitched it up, and I'll probably have to stitch it up one of these days. <laughs> I feel kind of bad that I didn't stitch it up like in advance of the retreat as a model, but you know, whatever. I would run out of time. Also at the retreat, I worked on my charm Santa piece, which is right here. Let me get it clipped. So this big old mess of part threads in here. So this is stitched on 32 count opal um, gold, raw gold Belfast. What I did at the retreat is I worked on this border over here in the gold metallic. It's actually like not just gold metallic, it's blending filament, it's also number four braid. High luster gold. Of course, it needs the back stitching. And I also started with the little holly leaves up there. It was just like an afternoon or something, and I tried not to. I didn't want to get really into this part of it because that was just complicated with all the confetti and everything. And I figured, oh, it'd be really easy just to go around the border. Of course, I did mess up a little bit and had to frog. <laughs> Regardless. <laughs> The retreat was so fun. So I worked on one more piece while I was there. That was Lizzie Kate Boot Club. Oh, this one is by Sandy Orton from the old um, book, Christmas Remembered, Charm for Christmas, Leisure Arts. This one, let's see if I can pin it at an angle, how that's going to work. Okay. This is the Boot Club by Lizzie Kate. Spooky, monster. Stitching this on Dirty Belfast. And the part I did at the retreat was monster. That took like a day. Frankie there, Frankenstein. He's going to have black buttons for eyes. That came out pretty cute. So this was actually another finished brew monster that is a single chart there. October was the month for finishes. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this is, a, I'm happy with how it, you know, it's coming out. It's going to be two more words and then the little candy border at the bottom. So I think I have a little bit more border to do and then work across the bottom. I probably will just do that last, work across the bottom. Border. And then it's going to be finished. And I bought a bunch of charms for it. The chart comes with buttons, and the buttons are cute, and some of them serve a useful purpose, like Frankie's eyes, for example, but some of them are just kind of like there for no reason, in my opinion. And I really like charms, because when I stitched the Lizzie Kate Living with Charm series, that involves charms including the most adorable little um, scissors charm. Anyway, so I got a bunch of charms from this company called 
Fanciful Brass Ink. They have a website. Those two are so cute. So guess how much I paid for all those charms, of which there were there are 18, right? Um, Four dollars and some cents. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to uh, ask me the, um, if you want to know, I'll, you know, cut and paste the name of the, the URL for the store in the comments if you want to check them out. They've got lots of charms of all different, all different holidays, and they're all very reasonable. I mean, depending on the size, most of them are like 10 or 20 cents. The bigger ones cost more, of course. Okay. So let me talk about the retreat a little bit. So it was at the um, Embassy Suites in Herndon, Virginia, near Dulles Airport, as I mentioned. It was organized by Katrina Boyd and myself. I mean, she did all the heavy lifting, but I helped out where I could with like publicity and stuff. So yeah, I grew out of my library meetup. My local friends asked me to set up a longer retreat, you know, more than just an afternoon or a day at the library. I looked into it. I realized it might be in over my head and I kind of contacted Katrina, retreats are her biz, and that was a great decision. Uh, she did a fantastic job. The Embassy Suites was very nice. We had a, a great uh, room to stitch in. There was enough like space for everybody. It was space to mingle. That everyone had elbow room. We weren't like on top of each other. It was kind of a smaller group. I think there were 55 people that we were expecting, and then some people didn't show, so it was more like 48 or something in the end. That was a nice size, and I think that's what we're going to cap it at next year. So it's going to be that same weekend in October, the third weekend in October, October 19th, 20th, around there. And I will uh, let you know when signups are available. So the retreat technically started on Friday, but I arrived Thursday along with some other people. So I got there and basically parked myself in the uh, lobby with some other people who were early arrivals and I knitted a bunch on my Coraline piece and then we went to uh, dinner. There's a ton of good restaurants around there which was kind of an unexpected benefit and a lot of them are within walking distance so that was cool. We actually didn't walk that first night. The hotel has a shuttle that um, will take you anywhere within like a couple mile radius and we had a big group, like eight or ten of us or something, going to dinner, and that was too many to fit in a car, so <laughs> we asked the shovel to take us, and they did. That was pretty awesome. So we went to this place called Stone Cove Kip Bar. It was very good. I got, like, a pizza flatbread type thing and a very stiff cocktail. Oh, my gosh. It was, like, straight up bourbon. <laughs> It was supposed to be this like blueberry thing, but the blueberry was all like in the ice cube. So when the drink was served, the ice cube was solid and it was just like straight up bourbon. As the ice cube melted, you started to taste the blueberry. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Good thing none of us were driving. <laughs> I wasn't the only one who got that blueberry cocktail, like three of us did. Anyway, so back to the hotel that night and we hung out more in the lobby and um, I started stitching. I worked on my fall fairy piece. My roommate arrived, Jesse. Just Marie. hi, Jesse, if you're watching. So we were roommates. That was fun. And we got our room. And then Friday morning, the conference room for stitching opened up. So the um, embassy suites they have they provide a really nice breakfast every day. They have like lots of hot food and omelets and all sorts of stuff. Uh, I got oatmeal. Yeah, really nice breakfast. They also have a, a happy hour included every day with like hors d'oeuvres, chips, and fruit day, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that was nice too. And drinks, of course. Um, all this is included. It <laughs> was, was pretty awesome. I mean, you don't have to like break out your wallet really <laughs> inside the hotel. I mean, sure, if you want to like order room service or something, that would cost money, but the happy hour and the breakfast are included that's cool and in the at the actual uh stitchy conference room i had a great table i sat with i was next to i was in between amanda um lazy stitcher bt <laughs> as i mentioned <laughs> earlier and uh leticia the crafty curator hi leticia if you're watching 
so and there were a bunch of uh, really lovely ladies around the table and we had a fantastic uh, weekend together laughing laughing talking making a lot of noise I think I think we may have laughed so cried we cried a couple times and it was just like it was fantastic so we had the the room Friday and then for dinner on Friday what did we do we we tried to order pizza, um, but then, or not just pizza, but like a place, an Italian place that had pizza, they wouldn't deliver. They were like, you have to go through this DoorDash thing or whatever, and you had an account, whatever. So it was complicated. So Melissa, hi, Melissa, if you're watching, she was kind enough to just go pick up the food as takeout. So <laughs> she brought it back. And what did I get? I think I got like a Greek salad or something that night. I can't remember. It was decent. And, and I know I got a few drinks at the um, happy hour at the Embassy Suites. That was cool. <laughs> and then more stitching up until around like 11.30 at night or something. I think they were going to kick us out of the room at midnight. So we packed up around like quarter till. That night, we stayed up. Jazz and I stayed up really late just uh, chatting and having a knit time, I guess, <laughs> in our rooms. That was cool. We did not get up super early. We slept in on Saturday. We actually missed breakfast, so they were serving until I think 9.30, and we just we just missed that. So we went to uh, Starbucks and got some food and brought it back, and then more stitching all day long. <laughs> so on Saturday, we had the exchanges. There was a Christmas ornaments exchange and there was a autumn box, you know, with like 10 items that were, you know, different stitchy theme things. Like there was a something froggy, something yellow, something orange, something autumn, something tricky, something treaty, you know, that kind of stuff. So I actually didn't participate in either of the <laughs> exchanges, but uh, it looked like a fun time. So maybe next year. I just didn't have time to get the stuff together. And that was, uh, Saturday was pretty much it for the retreat. That was the last day we had the room. So there was Saturday night and then the um, Sunday was like the travel day. I actually wound up going home Saturday night because there was a mix up with my room. That was uh, one <laughs> large strike against the embassy suites. They booked us on the wrong dates, but the, um, other aspects of the hotel, the, the happy hour, the breakfast and all that stuff, the free shuttle, all that definitely makes up for a lot. It was in general a very nice place to stay. The, um, the room mix up thing, just like a long boring story. I mean, thankfully it wasn't like a large long drive for me to get home. It was only about half an hour or at that hour, late at night on a Saturday, no traffic, maybe 25 minutes. So, and I think, um, I could have, you know, crashed with uh, one of my friends, but it was easier for me just to drive home. The rooms were actually very big. Everybody had like a bedroom and a extra room with a sofa bed, so you could definitely um, fit more people into a room if you had to. <laughs> and then I got home and Sunday was like my uh, recovery day. <laughs> There's like no tired as like tired after a retreat, but it was just such a fantastic time. On Saturday night, we actually went to this um, Irish pub to eat a, a late dinner. It was called PJ Mulligan's, and it was actually really good. I found restaurants on Yelp, yeah, and we also had the shovel take us there, so that was cool. The retreat was just fantastic. It was probably the best retreat I've ever been to, and I've been to a bunch, and well, not a bunch, but several. <laughs> Maybe I'm biased, you know, because it is it was like my like, local retreat or whatever, but I really had a really good time, and I can't wait to do it again next year. So after the retreat, what did I do? I worked on, well, I worked on my fall fairy piece a little bit more to get that back stitching done, as I mentioned, and then I decided to work on Spooky House which I'm still working on. <laughs> it's on frame. Big, massive scroll frame. 
Let's see if I can pass the heart threads. There we go. Yep, so this is Spooky House by X's and O's. What I did is I finished this page over here and I started backstitching with that page. So I did the gravestones. Weren't they cute? See you later, Ted and Buried. <laughs> and the stonework, the little guy in the window, the spider and the spider web. I started working on the center page with the back stitching, so that would be like the steps and the rocks around the door and all the um, the windows and all that. I mean, the back stitching is not that bad. It's a lot of straight lines. Oh yes, and I did the metallics too. So there's some gold metallic here and the um, torches, and then there's silver metallic on these like little things that are just whatever those are, posts or whatever that are poking up. This one is backstitched um, over here. That's backstitched. This one is partially backstitched. Yeah, so it's coming along. I didn't really work on it as much as I would have liked this week because I got sucked into diamond painting. So I'm going to keep on this. I didn't actually work on it at all yesterday, which was kind of a, a bummer. But <laughs> trick or treating was fun. I got dressed up as my son was Elmo, and I got dressed up as Big Bird, which was fine. But oh my gosh, that costume was so hot! I was dying. It was like it was warm. It was like seventy yesterday, and I was wearing the equivalent of like fleece pajama, you know, full footy pajamas. I mean, they weren't footy, but you know what I mean. So <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> But it was worth it. I mean, Oliver, my son, was so excited to um, see Mommy dressed up like Big Bird. So. <laughs> and Spooky House. So this is actually going to get um, put on hiatus after I, well, after this week, I guess. Just because I want to concentrate on some projects that I think I could finish this year, like the Fall Fairy and um, Charm Santa and stuff like that, and my mini mandala and my boot club. And is that it? It might be. I feel like I have five more finished goals. Now I can't remember what they are. Oh, yeah, we do Disney as another finished goal. So I guess I do have one more piece to show you. I only worked on it a day, but I did do like 500 stitches, so every stitch counts, right? So this is Winnie the Pooh by MCG Textiles, DMC Conversion, Fabric Conversion. Really, I'm only using the chart. So I stitched the column with Christopher Robin minus his head, as you can see. I didn't even do the whole column. It's a bit patchy under his feet, but the feet are actually done. Aren't they cute? His little white socks and black shoes. And his missing head. He's headless for Halloween. <laughs> I skipped the head because it's one of those over one sections, and I like to do all the surrounding stitches first. So maybe after I do the, the column next to it, I'll go back and do the head. Yeah, so this piece, as you can may have guessed, because I said I only spent one day on it and 500 stitches, it's not exactly a priority now because I have other priorities. <laughs> As I just mentioned a minute ago, the um, other two full coverage pieces, Fall Fairy and Charm Santa. So basically I'm taking time away from Pooh to give to those two. If I finish those two, maybe I'll have time to work on Pooh in December. Okay, I just noticed the clock and I have to run and get my son. So I will be back in a bit and I'll talk a bit about my plans. Ta-ta for now, peeps. I'm back. My son's having a little lie down, so I'm going to try to film this video. I realized I forgot to show you my haul, and I'm sure you want to see that. And I forgot to mention with the retreat, Katrina brought a bunch of stuff to sell. Um, fabric, patterns, um, little useful things like hacky bobs and 
all sorts of stuff. <laughs> it was really awesome. She had a great selection of fabrics and patterns and it was really cool. It was like having a little miniature uh, LNS right there in the uh, Stitchy Conference room. <laughs> so I did pick up a few things and I also got a few things in the mail. So here's one of the things I got in the mail. This is Skeleton Crew by the uh, Cricut Collection. I got this from Everything Cross Stitch. I like that store. And I got this one as well. White Willow Stitching Griffin in Flight. This is a pretty big pattern, 208 by 214. Very detailed, really like it a lot. And then at the retreat, I got this from Katrina. This is opalescent Belfast under the sea fabrics, dappled hollow. Although it looks really nothing like the dappled hollow that's on the viewer site. This doesn't have any purple in it. It's just like a really pretty Spring green was sort of the striated pattern. Oh gosh, the color is just, that's, mm, it's brighter than that. Do I hold against my shirt? I guess that's kind of true. Yeah, it's really beautiful fabric. It's like a gorgeous spring green and I love it. I'm not sure what I'm gonna use it for, but I will find the perfect pattern someday. <laughs> Maybe a Mirabilia. It's a fat quarter, so I have enough to do pretty much well, those things. And what else did I get from her? I got this pattern, Ten Blessings, Scary Night 2. It came with um, charms. It was kind of funny because after I bought this from Katrina, I realized that two of my table mates, uh, Jesse Marie and Melissa, were going to start this like together at the retreat. <laughs> so they both uh, got it started. I did not. I don't have any. I didn't have any fabric with me to uh, do that, and I am not really um, game for any starts at the moment. Anyway, I need to finish some pieces first, and then there was a. Oh yeah, there's one more thing. So I got this from Katrina, Tacky Bob, and this beautiful blue peacock pattern. I love that so much. I'm considering keeping this pristine for a while. I have my eye on this beaded peacock kit that's um, from Abris Art. And I have a really nice uh, balance in my stitch from stash account right now, like <laughs> close to $200 in the positive. So I think I'm going to order some stuff from that Russian store, mercresticon.ru. And um, I mean, they carry it. So how perfect, I don't know like how the thing is going to be kitted up or how the, if the beads are already, already going to be organized or what, but in the case I need something to organize them, what would be more perfect than the peacock case for the peacock, right? <laughs> and then there was a freebie table, and I got a bunch of cool things from the freebie table, like this Easter Joys by Leisure Arts. I really like that. I think it's really cute. The bunny and the eggs and the pastel colors and the blue flowers. I think that's really cute. And this one, the Spring Angel by Lavender and Lace. Angel of Spring. I think she is gorgeous and she is um, being stitched I think by uh, Tina of Simply in Stitches. I think Tina's almost done with it. Hi Tina if you're watching. And um, she looks fantastic. I guess I could probably put her on the, uh, the green if I wanted to. The pink would look good against the green and the... I don't know if it's quite dark enough for the white to pop though. I don't know. And I got this one, Butterfly Fairies by Lenarte. This is the day one, that's the night one. These are really nice patterns, they're pretty big. Let's see, it says, Serene creatures of myth, two butterfly fairies rest gently upon the tender stems and leaves of spring flowers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, paths, the patterns are color and they're like, each one I think is six pages or something. Yeah. Really pretty patterns. Maybe we'll get around to them one day. And then I got this off the freebie table. This is just like a little Christmas pillow. Very Merry Christmas. 
by Metapoint Designs. I thought that was cute. I like the ornaments too. Yeah, so that was cool. The, the freebie table was interesting. It kept getting replenished throughout the weekend, so every time you walked up there, you would find like different things. So that was it for my haul, and um, I'm very happy with everything. <laughs> and it was so much fun shopping Katrina's store at the retreat, so that was definitely a, a bonus and another awesome aspect of uh, Stitch Fest. So. There's no like LNS near there, and uh, it was nice. I mean, it was exceedingly convenient having her store like right there in the conference room with us. <laughs> convenient and perhaps a little dangerous to the wallet. <laughs> Although, I mean, I was good. I just got those three items as I showed you, and in lieu of a goodie bag, Katrina offered everyone a store credit. And everything was on sale too, so that was nice. I didn't really spend all that much to get those items, and uh, I'm very pleased with what I chose. All right, so that's it for my stash, and let's talk a little bit about plans now. So very soon here, I'm going to be going to uh, on a trip to Disney World with my family, and I am going to take a few pieces with me. Um, my son is four, so we're going to you know, we can't like go, go, go all day and all night with him. So there will be some downtime in the hotel where I can presumably hang out and stitch. So my plan is to take the Boo Club, the Mini Mandalas, and last but not least, we do Disney. This one is almost done, except for the last word there. I think this is going to be my, my top priority. I'm going to try to get it finished and take a picture of it when I'm there, like in front of the castle or whatever. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll probably start working on it on the plane or something. Aside from those three projects, so the goal for this one will be to finish it. The goal for Boo Club will be to add one more word. The goal for the Mini Mandala will be to um, do the November Mandala and stitch another third of the border. <laughs> I intend to work on my Fall Fairy piece, um, probably I was thinking I would do it like now, but I think what I want to do now is continue on Spooky House. So I'll probably work on Fall Fairy after I get back from my trip. And just, I'll probably do like a couple days to get a page backstitch and then <laughs> rotate to something else and then a couple days to get <laughs> another page backstitch and rotate to something else. I don't want to get burned out from the backstitching. It is very like detailed and painstaking. But I should be able to get it finished in November, hopefully. If there's time, I'll probably work more on this piece, Charm Santa, if I have, you know, and I'll do like a small amount of effort, 500 stitches or something on Winnie the Pooh. Or maybe a thousand, I don't know. We'll see how the month, month uh, shakes out. October actually wasn't the best stitchy month, although I did get a bunch of finishes. I didn't stitch every day, not even close to it. There were a couple days where I didn't stitch because I was knitting a couple days where I didn't stitch because I was diamond painting a couple days where I didn't stitch for whatever reason. <laughs> so, yeah, I only wound up, I think, with like 25 stitchy days out of the 31. So, you know, not, not terrible, but you know, not great either. November hopefully will be a little bit better. And although I just, I don't know how it's going to shake out with the uh, vacation. I hope I'm not being too ambitious taking three uh, projects. <laughs> But, you know, the this one is almost done. The We do Disney piece, and Mini Mandala doesn't really take that long. A couple hours to do the Mandala, possibly longer to do the border. I don't know. It's hard for me to gauge how long it takes to do the border because 
last time there was so much frogging involved. I actually I got impatient with the frogging and started going at it with my scissors and I actually cut the fabric a little bit. One of the threads up here, you can't really tell because I stitched over it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it. But I really don't want to frog it again, so. <laughs> Alright, that's it for my plans and stitching and everything. Knitting. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you everybody who comments, who gives me the thumbs up. I love you all. It was so much fun to meet people at the um, retreat Stitch Fest and I look forward to meeting more of you and seeing you again perhaps at the uh, Stitch Nanigans retreat in uh, Arizona in the spring, McKenna's retreat. <laughs> That'll be fun too. I booked my flight and uh, I'm flying in a day early to do some sightseeing. So that will be great. All right, I will see you guys maybe like mid-November. I'll try to do mid-November, <laughs> if not the end of November. All right, take care, everyone. Ta-ta, be well, be happy. Bye.